Hello, hello, and welcome to another installment of my daily series, which is a series on just doing watercolors in the theme of Christmas, the holidays, winter, all of the above. So today I'm going to show you how you can design a very cute little pet portrait because this is a really great gift for anybody who has a pet or two or three or four or five that they love. And the way that you can draw a really cute pet is very, very simple. And I'm gonna demonstrate a few examples right here as my pets make noise in the background. So when I am just doing a very cute cartoonish little pet, I like to start with just a very simple circle for the head. And then from there, I create a bit of a round body. And really that's the basic template. And from there, I just customize it based on the particular features of the pet. So here we go again. I drew a very round head, this round body. Usually I draw them sitting down, it's pretty easy. And then I just draw their front feet, put a little back foot there. And this is kind of the basic pet. You can add a tail kind of depending on the tail of the pet that you have, whether it's a long tail, a short tail. The ears tend to vary, so these are kind of some floppy dog ears. The nose varies a little bit between cats and dogs at least. And then of course the markings on the pet are really going to make all the difference. So that's really the basic formula for creating a little pet portrait. And I will put a little example template online for you guys. The link will be in the description if you're interested in that. But yeah. and. So say that your pet isn't just some short little thing, maybe it's a Great Dane. So you, what you would really do is just kind of elongate the body, make it a little bit less circular, more of an oval, to give the impression of a larger, slimmer animal. And again, some nice floppy ears. You can tilt the head, I like to do that. You can give them different expressions on their faces. You can give them a little bit of personality or try to work in some of their particular mannerisms. Maybe you have a cat that's a little bit grumpy. Maybe you have a dog that is just a giant goofball. So you can see I've used this basic formula to create three distinct animals. So you should really try to just play with that and you can really make it work for any animal, any breed. I think that really the most important thing is just getting the most basic features right, like the tail, the ears, the nose, and then the markings. And this is the project that we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be doing a little pet portrait that I'll give to my daughter. It's going to be a little doodle of her cat. Her cat's name is Sherlock because she was a big Sherlock Holmes fan when we adopted Sherlock. Sherlock is actually a girl kitty, but hey, you know, there's not really anyone actually named Sherlock that I've ever met anyway, so maybe it's a girl's name now. <laughs> so I'm just using a lid from a tin to create a circle here. And starting out with just that basic formula again. So a nice circular head. And Sherlock is a pretty round kitty. She's very active, so she's not too round. Her tail isn't super fluffy. So if I was doing a maybe a long hair cat, I'd really make that tail a lot fluffier. I'm gonna tilt her head just a little bit. Little kind of triangles for the ears. There's a lot more variation between different dogs, I find, than cats. And the most challenging thing about cats is their markings sometimes, especially like tabby cats, because it's really easy just to go overboard on the stripes. 
it's hard for me to find a good balance between like enough stripes and too many stripes. And I'm going to put her in a box because she loves sitting in boxes. If you leave a box out, she is that cat who will just inhabit that box. And I'll put a little festive um, pattern or something on the box to make it look a little bit Christmassy. And then I'm trying to think of like something cute to do with her. I actually forgot, I'm looking back at this now, watching this again, and I actually forgot to give her whiskers in the final art, but that's okay. They're not that important. I could actually just go in with a white gel pen and just add them in very easily. So she's kind of an interesting looking cat because she really has, I think, the same coloration as like a Siamese kitty. But she, I think, is maybe mixed. I think she's mixed between a Siamese and a tabby cat. So she has some tabby markings on her. But then most of her body is this kind of, like, Siamese color. Although she's a little bit darker, I think, than a lot of typical Siamese cats. And she has all these stripes on her tail that I really love. So yeah, she has some markings on her face and her tail, and then the rest of her body doesn't have a lot of markings except her feet, but you can't see her feet in this picture because she's in a box. So I decided to kind of add a little bit of her personality in here. She's very ornery and very into everything, so we'll just pretend maybe this was a gift and she got it open and she's got the ribbon all over her and now she's living in this box. So that's going to be my template for this project and now I'm just using my carbon paper, transfer paper, to transfer this sketch onto my watercolor paper which I've placed underneath this sheet in my sketchbook. So I'm just going over everything all over again with my pencil, applying enough pressure to have those marks transfer onto my watercolor paper, which you can see here. It actually turned out pretty light, so there's some areas I'm just going over a little bit with my pencil. And that circle really didn't show up at all, so I just traced it on there again. And I'm going to do this painting with just some primary colors, so I'm not going to use any of these like fancy specialty colors that I've been using for a lot of my videos. I guess they're not really that fancy. A lot of people do use Payne's Gray. They're kind of fancy to me because for a long time I was kind of a purist about only using primary colors so that I could learn to mix every kind of color. And since this is kind of just a cute little fun cartoon doodle, I'm going to outline everything with my India ink, which is my waterproof ink. Now, if you don't have waterproof ink, you could just do your inking after you do your watercolor. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to do your inking and then go over it with watercolor, you should make sure that you're using a waterproof ink. And I do have a video that compares waterproof inks to water-soluble inks and the pros and cons and uses for both types of ink, which I really actually like using both types of ink for different purposes. And I love using dip pens. A lot of times if I'm doing one of these little doodles as a commission for someone, I feel a little bit nervous about using the dip pen still. I'm just afraid that I'm going to get a big glob of ink on my little painting. And that's no fun, but when I'm just doing it for fun, for myself, well, I'm doing this for my daughter, but I know I can easily redo it for her, so I can relax a little bit. And now I'm just using the ink to start putting in some of her markings, and I'm just using short little hatch marks, and I'll just go over all of these with watercolor, and that'll really help to give a sense of her markings without having to do too much work with the watercolor, so that's going to make things a lot easier. So... If you're able to add some markings in using just little hatch marks with your ink, I think that that's a really good idea. It also gives it a lot more character, in my opinion, and a little bit of texture as well. So I've got all her markings in now, and then I'm just going to 
I guess, add a pattern to the box. I couldn't really decide what to do, so I just am going to do dots. And I'm going to rely more on my color scheme to make this look Christmassy. And then I'm just putting some shadow on the inside part of the box using some hatching. And now I'm just going to give her a little bit of fur texture. Obviously I don't want these hatch marks to be as dense as all her markings because then all of those markings would become lost. But I do like to add a little bit of fur texture to these little pet portraits. Again, just because I think it adds a little bit of character, adds a little bit of texture and interest and visual variety. And in the areas where I know that she's just a little bit lighter, I'm making those marks even further apart from one another. Okay, so I'm done inking here, and I just want to make sure that my ink is 100% completely dry before I start doing any kind of painting. So I actually took a break and kind of just cut that part out. And now I get to start actually with the watercolor and I'm going to mix all these colors just from my primaries. So she's kind of a light tan color, I would say. So I'm gonna start out with a light wash. Looks a little dark at first, so I'm gonna just add some more water and just kind of go all over her with this light wash, kind of a beige and it'll dry a little bit lighter than what it's looking like here. So I always try to determine what is kind of the overall most basic and predominant color that I can find in this animal. And I'm gonna almost always just go over the animal with that. So even if the animal though is primarily white, I'm still going to mix up a really, really light gray because, you know, that's always the challenge, I think, when you are painting an animal that is white and it's not even a realistically rendered animal because with those, there's obviously a lot of shadows that are created that you can paint, even on white fur. Um, but when it's kind of cartoony like this, it's a little bit, I think, more of a challenge. So I would typically just use a very, very light gray and then add some fur texture. And I'm using my permanent rose to paint the ears. And I like this kind of light wash that I'm doing. For some reason I decided to add more pigment and I made it almost like a hot pink or a neon pink. But I'm actually glad that I did that because later on in the video I'm going to show you how a lot of times with colors like that, you can actually lift them up to lighten them quite a bit. So here I go putting in a ton of pigment and look at that. Her ears are like on fire. Poor kitty. So I don't even realize it right now as I'm painting that those are just like out of control pink. <laughs> I won't realize it till later after it's completely dry, but not to worry because I will show you how to lift up that color and make it appear a little bit lighter. So the overall color scheme that I'm going to go for in this little doodle is um, kind of like a bluish green. I really want the pinks in her ears and her nose to be the only reds in this composition. So I want those nice bright reds and then I want them to contrast with these kind of blues and greens to give this a more Christmassy look. So I primarily used ultramarine blue to lightly go over that box and I mixed in a little bit of my lemon yellow and used a lot more ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue to get this color that's a little bit more teal to do all these little dots and this is what I'll use on the inside part of the box as well where I want it to be a little bit darker and the key here too with 
more of a fun cartoony little doodle like this is just to try to keep things fairly simple at least in most places. I will do some more detail work on the kitty's markings but for the box basically what I put down here is how the box is going to stay and now I'm mixing up a darker color for Sherlock's fur and this was a little bit more challenging. I think I took it a little bit too purple. But I'll also show you how to balance that out. So right now it's a little bit too purple, but I'm kind of just applying this very light. I wouldn't call it a wash, but it's not quite a uh, dry brush either. I guess I would call it more of a glaze. And I'm just glazing over all of the darker markings on her. I think that I made this a little bit leaning purple because the rest of her I think is almost too warm. See she's kind of she really is kind of a tricky color because she's not really like a brown or orange cat. She's also not a gray cat. She's somewhere in the middle. So I'm trying to balance out these tones because the initial wash that I gave her I felt like maybe that was a little bit too warm or maybe a little too close to yellow. So I decided to balance it out by adding a lot more blue and red. And in the end, it works out. So sometimes it's just experimenting, seeing what's going to work for you. And a lot of times when I do these pet portraits, I don't like to just use like straight gray or straight, you know, just brown or black or whatever. As I said, like with the white fur, I don't want to just leave it white. And if a cat's black and white, I don't really want to just use black paint and then leave the whites white. I always want to try to find some like nuanced way to do the color to make it a little bit more interesting. And sometimes that means using colors that uh, don't quite seem to obviously fit, like purple. And now I'm going to paint the ribbon. This is just ultramarine blue. And I decided to make the ribbon look a little bit iridescent so I'm going to start out with just the ultramarine blue and then I'm going to start gradually adding in yellow so it shifts a little bit green and then I'll take it back to blue when I get back up to the top. So now I'm adding a little more phthalo blue in here to start warming that up because phthalo blue is a little bit closer to green. Now adding in some yellow. So you can see how that kind of just gives it a little bit of variation in there. So it's not just all one flat color. And now up at the top, I'm gonna bring it back to a little bit more blue. And so you could actually leave this pet portrait at this point right now if you wanted to just leave it really simple. You don't have to have that circular shape in the background. And I'll actually talk about a couple different places where I think you could really leave this painting. And now what I'm doing is I'm lightening up these ears. So I have my brush is all cleaned off. There's no pigment on it and I'm just dipping it in water. And then I'm applying that water, just the clean water with no pigment onto the ears. And that helps to soften up the pigment or reactivate the pigment. And then I'm using my paper towel just to blot it. I'm not rubbing. I'm literally just pressing the paper towel to the ears. And you can see that that is helping to lift some of that pigment off of her ears so that they're not so neon. They're still very, very bright. But I'm okay with that because as I said, I really want the color scheme to kind of be just like a little bit of that red or magenta and then everything else is going to be greens and blues. There, that's better. And then I'm just going to add a little more dab of pink to her nose. And now I'm going to be painting this background. Now again, you could just leave this plain I think. I think it's really cute just with the little pet doing something silly. But I decided to, and this isn't something I normally do with my 
pet portraits that I do, so I thought I would just experiment with something a little bit different and see how it turns out. So here's where I'm going in with just a lot of green. I'm trying to keep this wash fairly even. I wanted a lot more yellow in this mix of green so that it would be distinguished from the teals that I used in the gift and the ribbon. And I wanted it to be a very light and playful color. All right, so I let that dry completely. And now I'm noticing that maybe some parts of her fur are just a little bit too dark. So I had a little bit of gouache, white gouache, on my palette over there. And so I'm just going to use that to kind of lighten up right there under her chin, a little bit on her face, and on her front side. There we go. That looks a lot better. And you can use the white gouache too just to add a little bit of texture as well. That's the kitty I know. Yep, that looks just like her. And now you could leave this painting at this point, but I'm of course going to take it a little bit further and I'm gonna put like a little wreath of leaves around here. I don't know why I like doing this so much. I think it's actually just the act of painting these like vines and leaves and stems. I enjoy the process <laughs> and I don't know. Sometimes they turn out really nice and sometimes, like in this case, I just think it made the whole thing a little bit too busy. So again, you could stop and you could not even paint in like a colored background. You can just leave it white or you could have that colored background and just leave it like that. Or if you're me and you just can't stop, just try adding some long squiggly lines and then off shooting some leaves. I don't even know what kind of plant this is supposed to be. And then I'm going to try to make it a little bit more Christmassy just by adding some magenta red berries around the outside of it. And now I'm going to add even more leaves because it just wasn't enough. I have to had to go I had to go full in with the leaves. But it's fun, so no regrets. Okay. So we're almost done with this project. And as you can see, at different stages, I think that there are points that you could just leave it simpler, or you can add more decorative features to it. A lot of times I'll even just kind of in my own handwriting, I'll just write in the name of the pet. Of course, I didn't really leave myself any room on this one to do that. But this is a really good gift idea for anybody who has a pet. And I often do these with multiple pets. And actually, I will do one with both of my little snoring dogs. They're always getting into trouble as well. So I'll show you how you can use this pet formula to make little dogs as well and have multiple pets in your little portrait. So I think I might do that project next. But that's it for this project. I hope that you find this easy and fun. It's a really great gift idea. Thanks for watching.